Hello, everyone. Welcome to Kryptonized. Today, for the first time, we have a data expert, and I'm happy to have Brandon on the show. He's going to introduce himself in a second. But for this episode, we're going to talk about the gaming industry and how that applies to the tokenization space that you hear me preach and talk about all the time. But before we jump into that, Brandon, will you introduce yourself and why are you in Dubai? Uh, absolutely, Mark. Uh, appreciate you having me on the show. So my name is Brandon Arndt, founder and CEO of V3, also known as the Gaming Wallet. Uh, I've been in the crypto space since 2017, uh, but then I've also been a lifelong gamer. So I kind of merged both gaming and tokenization of you know the crypto world together and solved some real use case uh, problems. Um, and, and so we're developing the Gaming Wallet. Okay, and why does the world need another Gaming Wallet? That's a great question. Um, so, th there, as you know, anybody in the industry, there's a lot of wallets out there. Uh, you might have heard of like MetaMask or Coinbase wallet. Uh, the problem that we're solving is more of a consumer's perspective. Uh, so, as a gamer, uh, when it comes to tokenization in, in these games transitioning from Web 2 to Web 3, uh, the user experience on onboarding, acquiring these assets, and managing them between games is just not there. So. Uh, we're focused on simplifying that user experience um, in a wallet that now can be used between games as a, a gamer goes and plays one game to another. And what does this wallet store? Just NFTs? Does it save games? What does it do exactly? Yeah, so we're a non-custodial wallet, uh, very similar to MetaMask, which means uh, you know we don't take control of your asset. Uh, we're just the infrastructure that securely stores um, in a non-custodial way where you have full control over the ownership. Uh, and as long as you have access to your key phrases uh, and your wallet in general, then you, you maintain full control of it. Uh, and so we really see that being very important. Um, Web3 and blockchain to me uh, is all about decentralization. Uh, so you don't run into any issues of like individuals, um, you know, taking somebody else's assets and going off and running with them. Or you, you hear things about the FTX uh, scandal that happened where they were taking individuals' assets and, you know, using them inappropri inappropriately. So that, that kind of avoids all that. Okay. So you're more like MetaMask for games. Um, and do you play in the, let's just say, uh, information or assets that are backed by real world assets like as part of your game are these things backed by something what tell me about that aspect of it yeah well it's it it really is backed by the blockchain uh so as a, a game developer decides to tokenize their in-game items they need to decide which blockchain they're gonna tokenize on um and so there's a wide selection uh ethereum and evm compatible is the most common uh, but as we see, uh, you know, the technology advance, there's different blockchains that, uh, you know, are kind of more focused in the gaming realm, uh, like Engine is one of them as well. Uh, so as a wallet, we really can't control which blockchain these games tokenize on. Uh, so we're focused on, you know, allowing as many chains as possible to be stored on our interface and on our infrastructure um, and not just, you know, isolate one chain over another. Now, are you doing bridges at all, or is it just storing these items and uh, this, this, these tokenized items from games right in the wallet? And whatever it's changed, it's on. You automatically switch to it. How, how does that work? Because MetaMask, you know, you got to switch from chain to chain to chain. It's freaking annoying. Um, how, how do you guys do yeah. that? So it's all about working with the games that we bring onto the platform and the ones that want to, you know, transition in or are web three based uh so it's not like we're a bridge to where like we are the ones that uh, facilitate uh the ability to use one item in one game to another uh we're more of like integrating uh the wallet infrastructure into the game itself so um very similar to how you go to a website and you hit the connect button uh and you connect with metamask to log into your account uh, we would essentially work with the developers and have you know SDKs and, and different uh, backend things that they can integrate into their games uh, to now make it a lot easier for the consumer to be onboarded um, and, and kind of have a much smoother transition. Okay, and so let's say I've got a bunch of game items. I don't know if you're calling them NFTs, whatever it is, in my wallet. Am I able to trade that, sell it, exchange it? How does that whole process work if you facilitate that at all? Yeah, so what's really nice about our product is that we actually have a, a decentralized exchange built into the wallet. So 
Um, most of these Web3 games are browser-based games at the moment, uh, which means you know, you're in the web browser playing the game uh, where you have access to like the browser extension. Uh, and so with current wallets, you would go to an extension browser like MetaMask and you'd see like a, a display of your NFTs or your tokens. Um, we, we also have a, a browser extension as well, um, but it's hyper focused for the gamers usability, uh, which means when a gamer goes from one game to another, our interface face prioritizes the game's items and displays only what's necessary to that gamer. Uh, versus being, you know, shown unnecessary, irrelevant items that they might have been collecting. Uh, and so now a gamer can go from one game to another and kind of um, avoid being exposed to things that they wouldn't interact with while they're playing. Okay. And so I, I have a pretty good picture of, of what the wallet does. Now let's, let's expand out to the industry itself. Where do you think blockchain gaming is going? Because historically... I mean, uh, there isn't a hit game that I'm aware of. I mean, you can talk about Crypto Kitties, you can talk about a few others that have, you know, these little wins here and there, but there's nothing like some of the big games that are being produced by the big gaming developers in, in Silicon Valley. So is that coming? And if so, what's it look like? Yeah, it's a great question, you know, and, and you're exactly right. There really isn't, you know, a AAA game out there that is tokenized yet. Um, but if you ask anybody, you know, it only makes sense to either the gamers and developers that it's going to happen at some point. Uh, and the reason well, what's, is, what's the is because the problem is really infrastructure. Um, as we go and talk to these games that are, you know, currently in Web 2, uh, they're worried about tokenizing because they're worried that the onboarding process for their gamers is going to be too, you know, hectic, too complicated. And the experience isn't there and they're worried it's going to actually give them a poor experience. Uh, by transitioning. So I, I think, you know, what we're solving is is probably one of the biggest problems that hasn't been to tokenizing yet for the gaming world um, is just the, the ease of use, the user experience. Well, the games themselves that I've seen are not very good. I've played a lot of them and just to test them out, I'm not a big gamer, but they're not good. Uh, and and I, I keep hearing they, they blame it on the blockchain, but it doesn't have to be a full blockchain game. It, you could have gaming plus blockchain that's separate, that's handling the tokenization, yep. that's rewarding people for playing, that's you know giving out certain rewards. It, it's just the reward engine. So I'm like, well, what do you mean? You can't have good games with, with you know in combination of blockchain? I, I don't know what the problem is, but it's certainly solvable. Uh, I've worked for a company that was involved with gaming NFTs and swapping uh, products out and allowing and facilitating the sale of them. And... Uh, it, it was already in place for a while, but you know, one of the companies got greedy, and then the whole deal f fell apart. And I don't think it's recovered since. So I, I know it's possible. I'm just wondering what's taking so long, because uh, there's obviously a lot of money in it. If you give people the opportunity to earn a living just gaming, they're going to be flocking to it. So I don't get it. Um, and maybe you have a better explanation. Maybe these things are in process. I don't know. I just haven't seen it. Yeah, well, the entire space is just still new. Uh, and so the only, you know, developers that are like blockchain technology, you know, doesn't help make developers make a game fun. Uh, and so that's really been the problem is the developers that are willing to take that uh, leap of faith and, and use the technology and believe or know the technology to, to uh, create these games. Um, they're not skilled enough to essentially make a game that's enjoyable to play. Uh, and so that's the biggest problem is like finding these creative developers that understand the technology, but are also able to make a game enjoyable. Uh, and so that just kind of takes time because these developers that have that skill set are really consumed up by the, by the AAA um, development you know, companies and creating you know, games that we all know. Uh, and so, you know, the, the gaming industry is massive. It's, uh, you know, a 235 to 300-some billion-dollar industry globally. Uh, and just 2 to 3% of that's tokenized right now. But the thing is, is, you know, I see it very similar to, like, AI, where nobody really talked about AI. Nobody really understood the whole tech technology. But then once one good, you know, creator created a product that was uh, usable and, and enjoyable and, and you know, had use case, 
then the rest all of a sudden, you know, hopped on board and started creating it as well. And I think that's really what we're waiting on for the gaming industry. We're waiting for one of these AAA games uh, to make that big leap. Uh, and then the rest are going to, you know, essentially be forced to follow. Uh, and the reason is, is because um, as an AI is a big factor with this too, um, with the ease of being able to create these games and, and the technical aspect of developing it as it stream, AI streams, li- streamlines this process, uh, it's no longer who has the best development team, it's who can make an enjoyable game. Uh, and so the problem that these AAA companies are going to have is holding their customer base. And if they don't reward their customer base uh, well enough, then these smaller game developers who are able to make a fun game, maybe utilizing uh, tools like AI uh, to streamline their development process and cut costs, um, they're going to you know, have the competitive advantage because as a gamer, I'm going to want to play a game that I'm you know, financially being rewarded for and that's still fun to play. Uh, and so that's going to really you know, force these larger companies to tokenize and reward their players. Yeah, I, 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 the, the one company I know that's kind of focused on it is Blue Canary Capital. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Doug Borthwick, who I've interviewed on this show, is developing Web3 metaverse applications for it. But that's more like an economy where, uh, and maybe he's doing games, I don't know. Uh, but it's more like an economy using crypto as the currency and rewarding people uh, by attending concerts or you know people that are putting out concerts make money through that kind of thing. But I, I still don't know why we haven't seen a AAA game, so to speak, at least bolt on some sort of reward system that rewards people for playing or establishing things or completing you know, tasks or something like that. It's, it's interesting. Uh, and maybe the bolt-on yep. isn't as easy as I thought it was. Maybe you do have to start yeah. with the reward system in mind as you're building the game out. But you know, we've got a lot of high-quality games, even if there's something that's a spinoff or, or something that's related to something that they know is successful. Uh, I'm just shocked that we haven't been able to create it yet. I know it's coming. Um, I just don't know with the amount of opportunity available. You know how gaming is, what, uh, 10 times bigger than the Hollywood film industry? Maybe it's 100 times. I, I can't remember what the stats are. Yeah. Uh, you'd think with all that money available and no one's really figured out how to put a hit game on the blockchain or at least have a blockchain reward system, it's just perplexing. So if anyone can explain yeah. it to me, please do. Yeah, you know, I, I again, I think it all just comes down to infrastructure. Uh, and, you know, these developers really, you know, they're graphic designers and, you know, they're using Unity and Unreal Engine or their own development software. Uh, they really aren't blockchain specialists. Uh, they haven't, you know, f- focused on the aspect of the infrastructure build. Um, and so, you know, that's that's really why we're out here tackling this problem is to build that infrastructure to allow the uh, developers to focus on creating a, a good, fun game while, you know, the infrastructure is provided for them uh, to make that transition. So uh, and again, I just think it's all about onboarding. Um, you know, there's different things that need to be you know released in terms of you know, non- non-custodial. You've got like decentralized simple sign on um, SSO and. Um, different ways to, you know, speed up the onboarding process that that need to be uh, mainstream still. Um, but it's, you know, it's inevitable. I've been a big World of Warcraft player uh, growing up. And to me, I think that that's the best representation of what like a digital economy is going to look like or quote unquote, what the metaverse could and should look like. Because um, you got, you know, dedicated fans who spend way too much time playing that game. Uh, and they've been active for decades. And the reason is because, A, it's fun, but also it's like its own economy. You know, you can spend time and start um, acquiring assets that are challenging to get, uh, and then you can go to market with them and sell them and trade them with in-game currency to other players that don't necessarily want to spend the time to acquire those items. Uh, And so it really represents, you know, what what uh you know the metaverse or digital economy will look like the only thing that's missing is the blockchain aspect which is the you know tokenizing these items that are being traded um and what benefits the developers by doing that is they actually generate a new stream of revenue uh imagine in in these games like world of warcraft if they're able to tie on uh you know a you know revenue stream from every time an item's being traded um, the gamer is going to be fine giving the developers a cut because right now they're doing it for nothing. Uh, it's just just enjoyment. So it's just an added benefit for all. 
uh, a company called Wax uh, has already done this, and that was three or four years ago. And then their relationship with the company that they were bolted onto disintegrated, uh, and, and it kind of went away. And now things that they, I think are being sold on eBay. So it's already a proven concept, and that's just one of the things. Yeah. I mean, what if you were allowing? Let's take Roblox for for example, because I spent so much money on that game for my daughter. It's ridiculous. What if she were able, and she builds these incredible houses? What if she were able to build a business that served people? Uh, and she were rewarded for that in crypto when it went into some college bank account or something. I'm making this stuff up. But that would keep her on longer and make it more rewarding for her to build a business and it would teach some valuable skills. That's just one example. Um, yep. That I, I just, uh, I know it's going to happen. I know it's coming. Uh, it might change society for the better or worse. I don't know. But at least it, it, it gives them something, hopefully, of value to do while they're making a little bit of, of crypto uh, behind the scenes. But anyway, with that, is there anything else, Brandon, because we're at the end of our time here. Is there anything else that uh, you want uh, we didn't cover about the gaming industry and tokenization that you think is valuable for people watching to know? Uh, yeah, well, I just think, uh, you know, just have a broad spectrum on what gaming is, you know, gamifying things isn't necessarily playing video games. It's it's um, doing things digitally for enjoyment, making things fun online. So it can tap into other industries like education, for example. Uh, you can gamify education and make it more enjoyable to learn and you actually get rewarded for it. So it's not just spending your time playing video games um, and, and by tokenizing the assets, you know, you can generate revenue and actually um, have it not necessarily just be a full waste of time, uh, but you can actually, you know, create, you know, a stream of income. Yeah. And how about, uh, you know, with those tokenization and that accomplishments on the blockchain? Well, guess what? You get to see everything that you learned. It is all being stored on the blockchain. Colleges can look at it. High schools can look at it. Teachers can look at it. Parents can look at it. So because it's all being stored somewhere reliable, that's mutable. Um, so that's a, that's a great point. Where, where are the educational uh, startups that are trying to tackle this and, and, and bring it on chain? Because I, I agree. If you made it fun and you made it interesting, like my son plays this rocket game on Xbox and he learns how to build a rocket. And they're using real physics to get to Mars. So he's got to have the right engine. He's got to have the right thrust and calculations and all that. If he were being rewarded for it, you know, who knows? Who knows yep. how, how much time he absolutely and be better at physics because he's forced to learn physics in, in, in order to launch this thing. Anyway, with that, um, enjoy Dubai. I, I think the time for being in Dubai is almost over if, if you're a weather freak like I am. But uh, uh, it's a wonderful place to, to, uh, to visit. Yeah, absolutely. If you haven't gone to Dubai yet, uh, especially in the crypto space, it's growing. Uh, they're really attracting global tech uh, companies here. So highly suggest it. Uh, there is a hot season, so you got to watch out for that. But I love it here. Hello, Kryptonized fans. I've got a special token that I'm recommending for you. You've been following the show. We don't play any games. We'll tell you what tokens we like, what we don't. We have guests that come on and try to convince us. And you know the drill. But this one's a sure winner, and that is Tetragar.